One of the biggest things holding you back as a trader is not knowing what psychological barriers you have until you've actually traded live money and you've made the mistakes that normal traders make. Whether it's over trading, moving your stop loss, revenge trading, or doubling your lot size to make back your losses as you're going along. Everybody is different and the issues that you have won't arise until you actually start trading. Once you do that, then you can put systems in place to prevent yourself from doing those things. In this video, I'm going to help you prevent making all of those bad mistakes. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Artie, and this is The Moving Average, a show where we discuss everything day trading to keep you profitable. In yesterday's video, I showed you guys how to mark up a chart, what areas to look for, what indications to look for, what indicators you can overlay onto your charts to help you with your entries. And those are all technical aspects of trading looking at the chart in a technical perspective to know candlestick formations, to know chart patterns, all of the things that are associated with getting the right entry for your trade. And I'm not sure if I emphasized it enough, but it was waiting for price to reach an area where you're interested in getting into it. That's the first psychological aspect that you really need to work on is the waiting and the patience. A lot of people just enter trades willy nilly and it always screws them over because wherever you put your stop loss, every other bad trader also does that. Price takes that stop loss and then continues in the direction where you originally planned. Waiting for the better entry, waiting for a liquidity sweep, entering your trade there with a nice comfortable stop loss, not near anything. There's no random structure that could wick you out. That's going to be your better trade. So after you watch this video, you can hop back to that one. It's also going to be linked in the description down below. So the five main psychological aspects that I see a lot of people have issues with, and like these are like the cornerstone problems that traders have. I'm going to go through each one of them individually, help you address them and give you specific strategies and techniques to not do those same mistakes over and over. But the first thing you need to do is deposit 20 or $50 or hundred dollars into an account and start trading that account. I want you to trade it for a week or two or however long it lasts because 100% you're going to lose it. And through that process, I want you to write down your emotions, what mistakes you made, if you overtraded. Actually, let's just get into the list. The list goes like this. Overtrading, revenge trading, increasing your lot sizes to recoup your losses, not entering a trade when you want to, and then entering too late once the move is already gone. And then the worst, thinking what if after the trade had played out. Okay, if you have an issue overtrading, let's say the market opened, you see a candle move, just one candle move or one tick up, it kind of like shot up and you get into a trade and you hit your stop loss. And then you're like, shit, and you see another trade entry and you get in and in a course of a day, you entered 15 or 18 trades and then, I don't know, 40% of them were winners and then the rest were losses. Overall, you're up just over break even at like $16.12 in profit. You spent all that time and energy and all of that stress trading instead of having the patience to wait for those one or two good trades. Day trading is 100% a mental game. You need to be able to control your emotions and use your knowledge of technicals to find the best answers and entries for your trades. Because there's so much weight and pressure on every single trade entry, we can only like psychologically make so many important decisions in a day. And if you're making 18 very important decisions in a day and entering that many trades, it's completely wearing you out. The amount of stress that your body's going through is going to make your mind perform poorly. You're not going to make informed, educated decisions as the day goes on. So in order to prevent yourself from over trading, what I want you to do is mark up your charts like I showed in yesterday's video and set price alerts at areas that you want to get in and limit yourself to one to two trades per day. Even if you really wanna trade more, I want you to stay disciplined and only make one or two good trades per day. Now, let's get into the next one, revenge trading. If you enter your first trade for the day and it is immediately a loss and you get into another trade, and then it's another loss, it makes you question whether you know what the hell you're talking about or whether you know what you're doing at all. Let's say you lost $100 on each one of those trades. Now you're thinking, dang, I'm down 200 bucks. Let's look for another entry to try to recoup my losses. 
you enter another trade and you're down $300. You look for another one to try to recoup those $300 so your take profit is even further away. You keep doing this and you keep losing and you keep making your profit target so absurd that it makes zero sense with the analysis that you'd previously marked up on your charts. You are just at this point revenge trading, trying to get back your losses. What I want you to understand when it comes to revenge trading is that once you've had a loss, you need to compartmentalize that into a little nice ball and throw it in the trash can. That money is no longer yours. You should never think about it again. You lost it. It's like if you have, you know, a hundred bucks in your pocket and it's right next to your phone and you're at like a gas station, you pull out your phone, you check it, you hop back in and you drive off. That hundred dollars is so gone. You will never see it for the rest of your life. Just accept the fact that you lost it and move on with your life. Dwelling on that fact is not going to help you at all. So in order to prevent yourself from revenge trading, I need you to get a very specific tool, get in the car, drive to the store and buy this one thing and it's going to change your life forever and it is ridiculously cheap. They're called sticky notes. Now, after you've had two losses and maximum two losses, what I want you to do is take a sticky note and write this on it. Then take this don't trade sticky note and stick it in the smack dab middle of your screen. And it is a reminder to yourself while you're still in a normal conscious state of being to not trade anymore. Because if you keep revenge trading, you will fall into this vicious spiral. And I've seen people blow $10,000 accounts in like an hour by over trading and revenge trading because they've already lost complete control of their emotions. But if you do this on your second loss, you are still in a normal mindset and you can actually control yourself from continuing to make those bad mistakes. Now, the third error that people do is doubling their lot sizes. This usually happens in conjunction with revenge trading. So with revenge trading, you're either increasing your take profit levels so that you can recoup the losses or instead of making a larger take profit, what you do is double your lot size to get the same small move. So instead of risking 1%, you're risking 2%, then you risk 3%, then you risk 4%, and eventually you're risking 10% per trade, and your account will go very, very fast. Never increase your lot sizes. Always stick with the same risk percentage. And the best thing that you can do is use something like the TTF risk calculator. It basically automatically calculates your lot sizes and position sizes for you. So say you want to get into a sell position, your risk percentage is one, your take profit is 2%. You click the sell button and it pops up a take profit and a stop loss line. You can literally drag the stop loss to wherever you want, whether it's above the swing or a couple of points above the swing or a nice buffer zone and it will automatically move your take profit level and it will automatically calculate your lot size, position size, enter your trade so that this stop loss is exactly a 1% risk and that's a 2% reward. This risk calculator comes included with TTF membership, link down below. The next issue is going to be not entering a trade or entering a trade too late. A lot of people go through this thing called analysis paralysis, where they'll be analyzing the chart, analyzing the chart, see their rejection candle or point of interest where they wanna get in their entry, and then they psych themselves out, they don't enter a trade, and then the next candle starts moving in their direction and they're like, oh, I should have gotten in when that candle closed. And then price keeps going and keeps going and keeps going in their direction. And then they finally get into a trade, they have a short retracement, they get stopped out, and then price continues in the direction of their original analysis. Here's the answer to that. If you see your trade setup and all of the confluences are in order, say you have two confluences or three or four confluences, that you are required to have to enter a trade and all of those things match up, make check boxes so that everything matches up, all of your confluences are in order, enter your trade at the point that the candle closes. Everything's matched up, you're already on the chart, ready to enter a trade, you've put in your parameters on the risk calculator, the second that that candle closes, click the send order button. The reason you have analysis paralysis is because you're worried if the trade's gonna play out or not. So after you've entered a trade, close your laptop, go on a 30 minute walk, brush your teeth, take a shower, clean your house, do whatever you need to do in order to not look at the chart. Come back later or the next day to see if your trade played out. Now, this is the worst one. Thinking what if after the fact. It's looking at everything in hindsight. 
oh, I should have entered here. If I entered here and I would have held it to here, I would have made this much money. Or had I woken up an hour earlier, I would have seen this entry and I would have gotten it. Should have, could have, would have is a big pile of crap. Looking at the charts after the fact is easy. Thinking about what you could have done or you should have done is easy. But essentially what you're doing is telling yourself a cartoon. It's about as fictional as Peppa Pig and or Dragon Ball Z. The thing that you can do to prevent this is stick to your rules, get your 2% or your 1.5% on every single trade and look for the next trade setup. If you do this consistently over months, years and decades, overall you will be profitable. You will never look at previous trades that could have gotten you $68 million. It's ridiculous to think about. No way in hell would you ever hold a trade that you entered in with a scalping strategy on a five minute time frame to think that you were gonna hold that trade for more than 100 points on NAS. Let's say the market dropped from 14,900 all the way down to 10,000. You're not gonna hold a five minute candle entry that long. Your analysis is not that great and you're not a swing trader. You entered in a scalping trade, stick to your strategy and stick to your rules. Over time, you will build up your account, increase your percentages and have a lot of capital and have a great life and have good income. Now, if you guys are really struggling with the psychological aspect of day trading, what I highly recommend is signing up for the trade floor, link down in the description. We have an entire section of the community that solely works on the psychological aspect of day trading because it's about 90% of day trading. There are hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of people in there that have the same issues as you and all of our staff is there to help support you in those issues and help you learn how to unlearn them.